Hey guys, today I'm going to try to teach cars how to drive using neural networks in Unity with neural networks that I made completely from scratch without any external libraries. I'm gonna show you all the steps that were involved in doing this and let's see what kind of results we could get by training these cars. The neural network script itself is also available in the description below. I started off by getting a car off of the asset store. I looked at a few and eventually decided on this one. It has a ton of cool features like drifting, boosting, and jumping. And I really wanted to see if the car could figure out how to use any of these extra abilities. So that's why I decided to go with a car off the asset store instead of just making one from scratch because adding all these abilities would have taken a ton of time. The next thing to work on is actually creating the racetrack itself. I started off by planning on originally just making it by hand and that would have been very tedious but luckily I remembered that you could make racetracks using Bezier curves and those are the curves that you use in Photoshop to make a line bend and there are a bunch of assets on the asset store that help with this. This one asset looked really promising in particular. It has so many different features and a lot of them saved me a ton of time on this project. For starters it could create the road itself but then it could also place objects on the sides of the road like these railings in the example but in our case we're going to turn these into walls so the cars know not to fall off the track and if they crash into the wall they get a punishment but it also has this other feature where it could place objects along the track in set intervals or set distances and that is absolutely perfect for setting up a checkpoint system which i was going to have to do by hand anyways but now i could set it up to just automatically make the checkpoints and if i adjust the track it automatically generates them again Adding these checkpoints help give the cars periodic rewards. Because when we look at a racetrack and the car is going around it, we can obviously tell which one is doing the best just by knowing which one is in the front. But we know what a racetrack is and we know what doing well on a racetrack is. The computer and the cars have no idea what a racetrack is at all. So it's hard for it to just know which car is doing better. But these checkpoints are an easy way to know which car is in the front because the car that went through the most checkpoints is in the front. We use this method until they do a complete lap. Once they do a full lap, we switch over to a time-based system, which basically just says whichever car does the lap the fastest is the best and that car gets the reward. But until that point, it's really hard for the cars to just randomly stumble upon a full lap. So the checkpoints help give them smaller rewards along the way. I already explained neural networks really well in my natural selection simulator video, although I will explain it one more time for anybody that is new to the channel or just didn't see that video. But I will say that that video has a better explanation than the one that I'm going to give here because that's basically what the whole video is about. And it also explains the genetic algorithm side of things a little bit better because that's what an evolution simulator is. It is genetic evolution. So if you don't understand any of those parts of this video, I would highly recommend watching that one either before or after this video to understand it better. Okay, so here's a neural network and basically each one of these lines has a number associated with it called the weight. Each circle is called a node. To calculate the value of a node, each weight gets multiplied by the input that it is connected to, and all of those numbers get added together. The equation for this is the sum of the weights times the inputs. The node also has a value associated with it called the bias. And this number simply gets added to that total sum that we just calculated. So now our equation for the node becomes the sum of the weights times the inputs plus the bias. Once a neural network is trained, it is literally just a list of weights and biases. These numbers don't change while the car is driving, but in our case, they only change in between the rounds when the mutations happen. So now we have the car, but it comes with a built-in controller that you use with the keyboard, which makes sense. That's usually what you do with most games. But in our case, we actually want the car to be able to control itself. It wasn't too difficult. I just had to add a few variables that hooked into the built-in car controller. Now, instead of using the keyboard input, we could adjust the numbers on these variables to make either the car press on the gas, turn, boost, drift. You get the idea. So now our neural network is connected to the car, but it can't see anything about the track, it has no idea about the environment, it's completely blind and can't react to anything. So to give the neural network some information about the environment, I attached a bunch of raycasts to the top of the car, and these basically just work as sensors that say how far away things are in the direction of the raycast. So the car can't actually see anything about the track, all it sees is these numbers that correspond to distances. In order to actually train the networks, we're going to be using a genetic algorithm, which basically just uses evolution and survival of the fittest to train the network. All of the cars in the beginning start out with complete random networks and some of them will just do well by chance and those cars that did better and got the furthest will have their brains copied over to the rest of the cars when the brains get copied to the rest of the cars they are changed slightly to allow for some more mutation and then the next round will go and you'll see all the best cars from the first round behave the same way but then all of the new cars that got the brains copied over will have a chance of being even better and we keep reiterating this process round after round until we have cars that perform really well okay now that everything's set up we could finally start training the new Neural network and they are off with round one it looks like they all just picked a random direction and stuck with it this one car ended up going straight very slowly so let's speed things up a bit in round two it looks like they learned a little bit because there are a lot more of them going straight instead of just backwards and into the walls by round three almost all of the cars have learned that going straight is better than going backwards they continue to do this until round six where we finally see our first successful left turn 
then three rounds later on round nine, they learn how to do a right turn. And at this point, they basically learned how to go left and right so they could go as far as they want, but they did end up running out of time. So now the goal is to become more efficient. And by round 12, they finally get this run. They complete their first lap with a time of 70 seconds. Now the goal is to just get faster. By round 20, they have learned how to consistently complete the track pretty well, and it looks like they are mostly staying on the dotted line in the middle of the road as their main strategy. And this will get them a time of about 60 seconds. If we skip far ahead to round 100, we'll see they actually start learning the difference between a left and a right turn, and they start to hug the corners instead of just staying in the middle of the road. And this strategy works a lot better, getting them a time 4 seconds faster than just staying in the middle of the road. I was pretty impressed with this performance, and I didn't think training anymore would get them to be that much better because they were already hugging corners and got a really fast time, but I did end up letting this simulation run for an entire week just to see if they could improve anymore. So after over 11,000 rounds and an entire week of training, here are the final results.